Hello everybody, here we are today. We're going to be doing my week 12 pick slash predictions and we are going to hopefully be able to go 4-0 this week. Now before we start, please make sure to subscribe to me if you're new to my channel. That being said, let's get on into it. So the first game of the week will be Thursday, of course, as the Montreal Alouettes play the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. This one obviously is kind of interesting because you have Winnipeg, a team that has done amazing this year to start off the season. They are 8-2. One win away from, you know, having a 500 record locked up, you know, 11 games through the year. Um, but also, too, I think Coach O'Shea would take the lead for most all-time wins as a head coach. So there's a lot of things going on there. As for Montreal, a club that is surging right now, a team that is got off to a good start to the year, had a little bit of a bump in the road, and then has continued to kind of keep the momentum rolling and maintain that second spot in the East. So for them, a big boost will be the fact that Cody Fajardo is back in action. After missing two games with an injury, he is slated to be ready for this one, and obviously he knows the Winnipeg Blue Bombers pretty darn well with his time in Saskatchewan. Uh, obviously, I know that the offense has struggled a bit for the Owls this season. However, I will say this. It uh, seems apparent at this point that Caleb Evans, while he is a guy you could put out there, I think, Fajardo would probably give you a better chance to win with his arm. Evans obviously made a big time effort there in that game against Ottawa to be able to help with the comeback. But at the same time, you know, when it comes to somebody having to throw the ball, who are you going to trust, him or Fajardo? I'm going to go with Fajardo here. Uh, but as for my pick, I'm going to be picking Winnipeg. Feels kind of like the obvious pick here. Obviously, there could be an upset. Montreal's defense could get some key stops. Their offense could click. Special teams could go in their favor. But for me, with Colaro set to come back from an injury after Drew Brown had been replacing him, I believe he's set to come back from this. Kind of seems to be all lining up for the Bombers to be able to get Coach O'Shea that milestone. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I'm pretty sure that's the case. Anyway, that's the first pick. The second game of the week, we have the Calgary Stampeders taking on the Toronto Argonauts. This one is going to be a fun one because the Stampeders are desperate right now and they are taking on a side in Toronto that obviously is now really motivated to beat them. Last time these two saw each other was in Calgary a couple weeks ago where the Stampeders ended up upsetting the Argonauts and then giving them their first loss, their only loss of the season. And this one should be a doozy, at least you're hoping for it. Again, the Stampeders are in a spot with the Rough Riders playing better and getting some wins that you weren't expecting them to, specifically against the Lions. They're now 5-5. Five and five. And while the East is kind of one of those things, you know, where you're not really sure how that's going to finish with Ottawa and Hamilton, they would not want to lose another game to have to kind of play with their playoff fate. They want to be able to upset the Argonauts again. However, I will say this, Chad Kelly did not play in that whole game, didn't even play in a whole half for this one. And I will just say that the Argos really are in a spot where they want to be able to get a little bit of revenge and they're going to be pretty well healthy. As far as I know, they're coming off of a bye. Is their last buy of the season halfway through the year? That is crazy. CFL Central pointed that out, and I don't get how they do the scheduling because that's ridiculous. But coming off that break, Toronto is going to be winning this one, at least in my opinion. The third game of the week, Saturday, will be the Hamilton Tiger Cats traveling to BC to play the Lions. This is a game that you're thinking BC should be able to win, but obviously they were supposed to beat Saskatchewan last week with a third string quarterback in Jake Dolagala. That didn't work out. In fact, the secondary looked like it got cooked a few times. MLS looked really good in that game. And for the Lions, we've seen now a couple times, not a lot, but a few times where their defenses got cooked through the year and for Hamilton, well, I know their team hasn't performed up to expectations. They've been able to have some big plays this year, and then obviously James Butler gets a return game against the Lions. Butler has been able to break out for some big runs for the Tabbies this year, and the Tiger Cats obviously are in a spot right now where Ottawa is coming off of a really bad loss. Of course, Hamilton is too, but they know that they still have a realistic expectation of making the postseason. So now is where you buckle down and try to get some wins that maybe you weren't expected to, regardless of your circumstances. As for BC, Coming off of a pretty embarrassing loss to Saskatchewan, um, you know, I kind of think that they just really were in the first half undone by turnovers and then 
Uh, the Rough Riders just came to play. That was another thing as well. And the offensive line really just seemed to struggle to protect Vernon Adams Jr. So for them, I think they've got a lot to prove in this one. I'm not going to be picking an upset here, despite the fact that I was so high and mighty and acting like the Lions were going to beat the Rough Riders and I get some humble pie. I'm still picking the Lions here to win this one. If Hamilton wins, that's going to be really crushing for me, but at the same time, good for them and their playoff hopes. And then the final game of the week is possibly the most intriguing because of the fact you have Ottawa, a team that you know really blew that lead against Montreal late in their game last week. And again, one of those teams that has a chance to make the playoffs. And Chrome has looked relatively good. Obviously, there's been some lows, but I feel like there's been a lot of highs with him. And the team has been able to get points, especially defensively. They have been able to get some turnovers off points. And I feel like for this Ottawa team, they should make the playoffs. They should have won the game. They should have been four and six. They should be, you know, I think just better than what they are now. Granted, obviously, the quarterback situation has been a nightmare for them and who they've had to roll out. And then Mozoli comes back and he gets injured and it's just a mess. However, they are taking on an Edmonton team in Edmonton that obviously has been a house of horrors for them. Typically, you're talking about the team that's at home making life miserable for the roadside. However, for the Elks, they are a club that has not felt at home since 2019, where they picked up their last win, ironically, against the BC Lions. Um, and it feels like a lifetime ago. That was before this channel was even created on Instagram or anything like that. I started my channel in 2020. Um, and obviously, we didn't have a season in 2020, 2019. It was later in the year when Edmonton won that game. So they've got a lot to play for. They picked up their first win of the season against Hamilton this past week. Really good for them. Trey Ford, I feel like, has helped this offense a lot. Even if they have, you know, maybe not done super well in big stretches, they've been able to get some plays. And Ford is a really exciting player to watch out for them. And they are a team that should be better than 1-9. Now we get to see whether or not they're going to be able to pick up their first W of home since the 2019 campaign. For this game, I'm going to be picking... Edmonton, I know this feels wrong. Ottawa should be the team that wins this. I feel like they ran the ball pretty well against Montreal last week. I feel like the defense definitely has the capabilities of shutting down Ford because, again, he's not a guy that can put the game on its back in terms of throws. So for Edmonton, defensively, they got to be able to clamp down on Crum and make him uncomfortable or at least keep things kind of hemmed in. They didn't do a lot of deep shots against the Alouettes and find ways to do pretty well. Maybe special teams. Obviously, Ottawa's get Lewis Ward, and they have some potential there. Feels like Ottawa should be the right pick, but after playing with fire and going 7-1 my past two weeks with my pick, I'm back in the Elks. We're going to go again with Edmonton with a W. I did it last week and it paid off. We're going for round two. So Edmonton with the home W for the first time in nearly four years, right? Something like that. Uh, but anyway, those are my four picks for the week. Winnipeg, Toronto, BC, and Edmonton. What are yours for the week? I'd love to hear them down below in the comments. Also, please make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. Everybody stay safe and have a great night.